Hi everyone, my name is Jordan and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a video that was women in adult sci-fi and fantasy. So much of the time, women are relegated to YA fantasy, which there is nothing wrong with YA fantasy, but so many women that write fantasy or sci-fi are put into YA fantasy, even if it is not YA. So many people I see that read adult fantasy intentionally avoid women thinking it will be written for a younger audience. So that is very obviously not the case. And I want to highlight some women that I have read and loved in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. This is quite the list, so I probably won't go too deep into synopsises and stuff of each of their books, but I will highlight some of their books I've read that I loved and maybe a brief, quick description of them. So first up is N.K. Jemisin. She wrote this series, which is the Broken Earth trilogy. She also wrote 100,000 Kingdoms. She wrote The Killing Moon. She's written a bunch. Oh, she wrote The City We Become. I think that's what it's called, The City We Became. I don't remember what it's called. But this is by far her most acclaimed series and my favorite of her series that I've read. This series, every single book won a Hugo Award. So like, that's kind of baffling. Um, it's kind of like a sci fantasy story that follows three young or three women at different ages. Um, and they have this power where they can basically control the earth. And every once in a while, I forget like the time, the time span between each, there are these seasons that happen that basically kind of devastate the world and humanity has to rebuild. And this happens occasionally. And these people with this earth magic basically are controlled by the government and they protect humanity from these seasons and kind of calm the earth but they don't really get to live their lives to the fullest because the government keeps track of them because everyone is really scared of this magic. So you follow these three different women as they try to live through this fifth season and it is beautiful. I think the first book is definitely the strongest of the three and it, the third book goes in a wild direction that many people either love or hate. Um, I loved it. It gets very science fiction heavy by the third book, um, but I think that this series is masterful. It is one of the most well-crafted stories, and so many people get turned off by this first book because it starts out in second person, um, but I promise the payoff is worth it, and it's great. Next up, I have Andrea Stewart. Uh, she wrote this series, which is the Drowning Empire series. The first one being the Bonchard Daughter, and then we have the Bonchard Emperor, and the third one. I don't know if there's a, a title release yet or even a release date, but I know that Andrea Stewart has been working on it because I follow her on Twitter. Um, this series is amazing. It's kind of a newer series, and it has one of the coolest magic systems I've ever read. Um, basically, the these people can take shards of bone from like humans and you can etch on them instructions and then you can build constructs with these bones and with these instructions you've written, they basically do what you command. Um, and so the magic is just so cool and so unique from anything I've ever read. And the characters are really great. There's animal companions and Andrea Stewart deserves some uh, recognition. I think her books are really fun. I know some people, have read it and don't like it as much. Uh, there's a lot of criticisms about like the plotting, which I can see what they're saying, um, but I really enjoyed it. I think the magic system is so cool. The characters are really fun and I loved this series so far. Next up, you didn't think I'd forget to mention this, Robin Hobb, the master of character work. So Robin Hobb has this very large series called The Realm of the Elderlings that has some series within it. The first one being the Farseer trilogy. I have started the Tawny Man trilogy, which is the third series in The Realm of the Elderlings and already loving it. Like I ha there has not been one single book that Robin Hobb has written that I've read that I have not liked. I think that The Live Ship Traders is definitely my favorite so far, uh, just because I felt like I connected with the characters a little more because it is a multi POV story. These are all told from Fitz's point of view. So if you don't like Fitz, you're SOL. But Robin Hobb does a very good job of making you like Fitz. So while I can't relate to Fitz a lot, 
The way Robin Hobb writes and the story and her characterization of Fitz still makes you want to read it and still makes you want to pick up the books. I love her so much. She's become one of my favorite authors of all time, and I am very excited to continue on with the Tawny Man trilogy. Next up, I have R.F. Kuang. This is Babel, which I have not read yet, but I'm hoping to get to in this next month. Um, but she also wrote the Poppy War trilogy, which I have read. And while the Poppy War trilogy is not one of my favorites, I 1000% respect what R.F. Kuang did. It is inspired by real historical events, and it is just a dark, dismal series with a bunch of characters that are just like trying to survive, but also coping with having powers that are just like OP. And there's so much like war and like death. <laughs> they are very, very dark books, but they're masterfully written. And the historical influences are amazingly researched. And I am so excited to get to this like dark academia version of R.F. Kuang because I think that a lot of what I didn't like in The Poppy War was just how war-centric it was, um, so I'm hoping that this one works better for me. Next up, I have Fonda Lee, who wrote The Greenbone Saga, which another series I absolutely love, the first one being Jade City, and then there's Jade War and Jade Legacy. I have talked about this series a lot on this channel because Jade Legacy is one of the best endings to a series I have ever read. Ever read. It is phenomenal. It is a Asian-inspired fantasy story set in a fantasy country. Um, it kind of reads like urban fantasy, and it's about these two warring clans that control this island via their magic powers that they can control using jade. So it's a very brutal, character-driven story with a lot of war and combat and the magic is really cool. There's, it's very heavy in politics. It's just masterfully plotted, masterfully crafted, amazing series. And the way it ended is one of the best endings to a fantasy series I've ever read. Next up, I have V.E. Schwab. She is not a little known author. She is a pretty large author out there. So you've probably heard of her. I won't talk about her too much. And I also know that some of her series are kind of hit or miss. She has what is classified as adult fantasy, but reads a little younger, um, the Darker Shades of Magic series, which is a trilogy, which I really enjoyed. Not one of my favorites, but I really enjoyed it. And then there's this one, which I absolutely adored, uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This is a standalone. Um, the magic is, uh, it's, it's like a soft magic system. It's not the main focus of the story. It's not the magic, but it is a fantasy world where this woman in 1700s France makes a deal with the devil to be forgotten because she does not want to go through this arranged marriage. And the, the deal kind of bites her in the ass because she cannot be remembered. As soon as somebody turns away, they've forgotten her, they've forgotten who she is, and she's immortal. So she has to live forever, never being remembered. Until one day in present day New York City, she meets a man named Henry who remembers her. And it's kind of like this slow, beautifully written book. I think one of the big reasons this really worked for me is when I read it, it came out like at the height of lockdown during the pandemic. And it was just like a gut wrenching book to read. The prose is beautiful. Um, and it, it's a really great book. I've heard some very good criticisms of the series, uh, that I totally agree with or not the series, this book. Um, and I get it. I think it was a lot of it was the timing when I read this, but I still, I still recommend giving it a try, seeing if it's for you. The plot is so slow. The book is not a plot heavy book. Uh, so if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, maybe it won't work for you. I really enjoyed it though. And I didn't mind that the plot was slow because I was really enjoying the character work. Next up is an, an author I've recently discovered and that is Becky Chambers. She writes a lot of sci-fi. I have not read her um, Wayward Planet series. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that is like a full series, but I have read three of her novellas, which were all amazing. They're all short and they're all very theme heavy. Uh, like they, they're, they're almost preachy, but in a very digestible way that doesn't feel preachy. Uh, they're, it's a, a lot about what it means to be human, what it means to exist, 
what it means to coexist with others. And it is her, the way she's written it is just, they're all so far amazing. And I am so excited to read every book Becky Chambers has ever written. Next up, I have M.L. Wong. I have only read one book by her, but it was amazing. And that is The Sword of Kaigen. This is a self-published fantasy book that is got a really, really interesting elemental magic system. And it's very politics heavy. I don't want to get too far into it, uh, but it deals with a lot of themes of like motherhood and family dynamics and misogyny. And it's really cool. The combat is some of the best combat I've read in fantasy. And it's just, it's a really great book and it's a standalone. You don't see fantasy standalones that often. So I highly recommend you pick this up. Next up, I have Octavia Butler. Uh, she is mostly a sci-fi uh, writer, but it's got some fantasy elements tied in in some of her books. I have only read Parable of the Sower, uh, and I am hoping to read Parable of the Talents in the next couple months, but that book was so good. It was honestly a very harrowing read because it feels very um, accessible. Like, like the plot itself seems like something that could happen, and it's terrifying. But the way she wrote it is very... It's, it's dark, <laughs> uh, and I think that's the intention. That is, like, what her goal was, was to get you to see, like, this could happen, and what are you going to do to stop it? Uh, so she is a master in her craft, and she is also a well-known author. Her books are pretty well-known. I know she also wrote Kindred. She wrote Fledgling, which is a vampire book. I DNF'd Fledgling recently, not because I wasn't enjoying it, just because it was kind of weird, and it really wasn't what I was looking for at the time. Um, but I don't, it has good ratings, so I don't think it's a bad book. I was just, wasn't what I wanted at the moment. Next up, I have Lee Bardugo, another author that is very well known, but she's mostly known in the YA genre for her Grishaverse series. And not as many people, I feel like, I still think a lot of people have read it, but not as many people have read Ninth House as they have the Grishaverse. And this is Lee Bardugo's urban fantasy that is an adult fantasy. And it uh, deals with magical secret societies at Yale. It is phenomenal. And the second one actually comes out in January. So like, get on this now. Uh, it's also great for fall because it's got like that spooky, dark academia, cold vibes. So definitely give this a read before January so you can get caught up for the next book. And the next book's cover is like absolutely stunning and I'm so excited for it. But I highly recommend this book. Again, Lee Bardugo is a pretty well-known author, but she does also write adult fantasy. This is not YA just because she's written other YA. Next up, I have Rebecca Rowanhorse, who is currently writing this series, which starts with Black Sun, and then there's Fevered Star. This is a pre-Columbian Americas setting, and it has some really, really cool magic, and there is a lot of great representation. I will say the second book had a lot of middle book syndrome, but I think it has set up for a great third book, which I think this is just a trilogy. So, I'm excited, but this first one was phenomenal, and the audiobook was really good. The magic is really cool. This cover, stunning. We're gonna pretend the second cover doesn't exist because it's hideous. Um, praying that they that they come back with something like this for the third one, and not something like Fevered Star, because guys, Fevered Star's cover is bad. But this book is phenomenal, and I'm so excited for the third book, um, even if. Even with having a book with middle book syndrome in the series, this one alone makes up for it. This book is beautiful. Next up, I have Chelsea Abdullah, who is a new author on the scene. This book just came out this year and I'm 99% sure this was her debut book. This is a wonderful story that's perfect for like a summer read because it's set in a desert. So it's like obviously very hot and it's got really cool magic with Jin and there's really awesome battle scenes. The characters are really relatable and well-developed. I'm very excited for the continuation of the series and whatever else she writes, because if this is her debut book, like I can only expect it's gonna get better because this book was phenomenal. And I don't see a lot of people talking about it on booktube and it's great. Like give it a try. It's very different from a lot of adult fantasy. It's not medieval fantasy, which I feel like so much 
of booktube or at least maybe it's just the side of booktube i'm on that talks about adult fantasy focuses so much on like medieval fantasy and things like that when there's so much other adult fantasy out there that is just as good if not better than a lot of the traditional medieval fantasies like there's more to fantasy than that and this is a perfect example of that it is very good deals with some dark themes deals with a lot of incredible characters, really cool magic, really cool combat, immersive setting. It's a great book, give it a shot. Next up, I have Silvia Moreno-Garcia. Now, Silvia Moreno-Garcia is unique because all of her books are so different <laughs> and it makes her one of my favorite authors even though some of her books have not worked for me because she tries everything. This is one of my favorites of hers. This is like a haunted house, gross, spooky book, um, Mexican Gothic, beautiful cover. Um, another one I really liked was Certain Dark Things, which is an urban fantasy set in Mexico City uh, with vampires and stuff. And it's so cool, but like, again, so different. And then she has the beautiful ones, which is fantasy light. <laughs> There's not a fan, there is fantasy in it, but it is not the focus. And it's more of like an elitist um, romance, high society book. So like all of her books are just so unique, so different from each other, so different from anything else that I'm reading. And they're all mostly like smaller books, so they can all be quick reads. I'm pretty sure I read this in one sitting. But her books are all so good. And I think that she should be talked about more in the adult fantasy genre setting booktube because like even if you don't, like if you read Mexican Gothic and didn't like it, that does not mean you won't like her other books because they're all so unique. So I highly recommend Sylvia Moreno Garcia. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch. Two more. Um, first up, I've got S.A. Chakraborty, who wrote the Davabad trilogy. She has a new book coming out next year, new, new world, new setting, new series, and I'm so excited for it. The Davabad trilogy is one of my favorites. It is a Muslim-inspired fantasy story that is set in a fictional city of Davabad, and it starts with City of Brass, and then there's Kingdom of Copper, and then Empire of Gold. They're phenomenal, they're politics heavy, the magic is so interesting, the whole book is very atmospheric, the whole series, I mean. The characters are great. I will say, it does lean on some more YA tropes, but there are still a lot of adult content, so it's still very much so an adult series, um, but there is romance in it, and there are a few YA tropes, and I know that some people do not like romance in their fantasy, so if you don't, don't go into this one. It has romance, but it is still phenomenal. I love this series so much. I have a friend that just finished it, and she also loved it. When I finished Empire of Gold, I was a wreck. I was like bawling my eyes out, so highly recommend. Last but not least, I know you've probably all been sitting here thinking, is she really not going to say this author? Is she really not going to? I'm not here to disappoint. Of course I'm going to. Tamsamir. I don't have a book to hold up because I have gifted, not gifted, lent all of my copies out to friends. But this series, The Locked Tomb, which has Gideon the Ninth, Harrow the Ninth, and Nona the Ninth, and then Electo the Ninth, which isn't out yet. Phenomenal. I just recently posted a video of why you should read The Locked Tomb, which I will link above. So like, I'm not going to get too far into it here because like that video has all of why you should read it. So just go check that video out and read it. But Tamsamir is doing something in the adult fantasy sci-fi genre that is unparalleled. I've never read anything like these books and she is becoming one of my favorite authors of all time, already in the top five for sure. And I'll read anything she puts out. Like, Will she be able to put out something that I love as much as Gideon the Ninth after this series is done? Like, I hope so. But even if she wrote Electo the Ninth and then retired, I'd be like, respect, respect, because this series is something else. It's already got like a very special place in my heart, and I love all of these characters so much. But again, go watch that video for more of me gushing about this series. So that is some of my favorite authors that are women that, have, that are writing in the adult science fiction fantasy genre today. I know there's many more, so please comment down below and let me know some of your favorite female authors that I did not list here. But please, if you are looking at your TBRs and you're looking at your wrap-ups and you're like, wow, a lot of these are written by men, which I have done. I've looked at a wrap-up and been like, I read one book by a woman this month. Reevaluate. Add some more women to your TBR because 
You are missing out if you are only reading Fantasy by Men. Not to say that Fantasy by Men is bad. Some of my favorite fantasy books are written by men. But you're not going to get the whole scope of the fantasy, fantasy genre without branching out. Reading authors of color, reading women authors, reading non-binary authors, reading other perspectives in the fantasy and sci-fi genre is so necessary to being a well-rounded reader. So... Please, I implore you to diversify your reading. Look at your wrap-ups, look at your TBRs, diversify. It is important and you will enjoy it. I promise you will enjoy it. So just give it a try. I forgot I was wearing my Shrek shirt for this. I don't remember where I got this, but let's all appreciate this good Shrek shirt. Anyway, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, let me know down below. Uh, any more adult fantasy sci-fi genre authors that are women or non-binary that you want me to check out because I, I'm always looking for more. They're always so good. Not always. There's some, there's some duds. There are a lot of the times very good, especially when I get recommendations from friends. If you really like my content, please hit the notification bell to be notified every time I post new videos. As always, your support means the world to me. And until next time, thank you guys. Thank you.